everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Lynn Lewis and this is Luna Awaken. Welcome back to my All About Witches series. This is the second video in my All About Witches series. I apologize for taking so long to release it. I was in the process of moving and I'm so excited to start the series again because now we're getting into a lot of the witches that I personally really love and are attracted to in their own right because their crafts are so amazing. Um, if you haven't seen the first video in my All About Witches series, All About the White Witch, I'll link it below and as well as add it to the playlist of all the, all the other witches that will be added to the series. Um, and lastly, the, um, this is a judgmental free zone, so remember to be respectful and courteous to those who actually do practice this craft, and I will not allow discrimination to be had here. Now, let's get started. Now the second witch in the All About Witches series is what is known as an augury witch or an augur witch for short. Now I was actually really fascinated when I learned about this witch because I've never actually realized that I've seen them before in many movies and television shows. I actually never knew that that's actually what they were called. So I was really excited to make that realization. An augury witch is an individual who uses some form of insight to help translate a message that the universe is trying to convey. They might use some form of divination approach or a scientific approach to help translate those messages. They work a little similar to shamanism where they help individuals help translate these signs and symbols to help that individual on their spiritual quest. I think a lot of television and movies might have depicted an auger witch without necessarily saying that's what they were. You know, that lonely traveler you come across, that traveler who says, the birds above state this, 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 and this, you're gonna have a blessed day. Those are typically kind of like how auger witches were represented, especially in ancient times. That being said, augury witches can be traced as far back as ancient Rome. I want to say even further back as many cultures use symbols and signs in nature to help translate things. But in ancient Rome, they were highly regarded and they were even used during many major celebrations and things. For example, a magistrate about to undergo an inauguration in ancient Rome had to have a positive auspicism in order for the um, in order for for the culture to believe that this was a blessed next chapter in that ruler's reign. Now, ancient Greece don't use the term augur. They have what they what is known as an oracle. Ancient Rome uses augurs. I like to actually think that we still use a lot of their techniques in our own lives on a daily basis, especially if you're a very spiritual person. For example, have you ever seen a feather on the ground and thought, oh, the angels are trying to talk to me or there's a message they're trying to convey? Yes, that's exactly how an auger witch practices their craft and read those symbols and signs. So what exactly are they looking for? They typically work in a number of ways, but the five most common ways that they will look for a sign or symbol are what is known as an auspice or a sign. And for the sake of this video, we're going to go over their five key auspices. I know they use more, but they're, these are the five key components that they use in their particular way of translating the universe's message. The first auspice is what is known as from the sky. What this means is that they'll typically look at what could be cloud formations in the sky. It could be thundery, dark clouds or light feathery clouds. It could be lightning bolts striking in certain places on the earth, where it strikes, how it strikes, a formation that it causes after it strikes. Or it could also be things such as reading the ground, reading the earth itself and learning, you know, what could be changing to help get their omen across, to help get their sign or auspice across. They also might typically look at the moon and the eclipses that a moon might make during a certain point and how that will predict their outcome as well. 
The second type of auspice is what is known as from the birds. Nowadays in modern society, a lot of signs and symbols from birds can be depicted as a synchronicity, but to an auger witch, there's a lot more to it and there's probably more depth to it. There are two classes of birds that an auger witch will look into. The first one is known as an aw sign or birds typically like crows, ravens, hens, owls. They will translate what these particular birds are trying to say based on their flight patterns, based on something that they may leave, or anything that they could really think of that they feel that the universe is trying to convey to them. Remember, they use whatever they feel the universe is trying to say, and they translate it. The second class of birds that they use are what are known as an A-light. Birds such as eagles, or vultures, typically birds that are in flight most of the time. For me personally, I actually will firmly support and believe this because two of my spirit animals are actually birds of each of these classes, a raven and an eagle. And for me, I always use them to help me get the messages I need to receive from my guides and from the universe. So I can firmly support this particular type of auspice. And I'm not an auger witch, I'm not gonna sit here and prove that I am, but it's just another form that I communicate with my guides and auger witches do the same thing with more depth. And have you ever seen that movie Troy with Eric Bana and Brad Pitt? There was that guy that stood next to the Trojan leader who said, oh, I saw a crow fly overhead. Apollo has blessed the battle ahead. And that is an example of a from the birds um, sign or symbol that was used particularly in the movie in this case, but an auger which will use it in the same way. The third type of auspice is probably the most unique and interesting to me at least, and that is called, or what is known as from the dance. An auger witch will typically use predominantly chickens and roosters to get the messages conveyed through this type of auspice. In olden days, they would actually draw a circle in the ground or in the sand, and they would label the circles in certain patterns or letters. Then they would spread bird feed and watch the chickens eat the, f the feed, particularly in certain parts of the circle, and wherever they went in the circle, they would help translate the message. I kind of like to think of it as old school Ouija um, technique, and that's kind of what I thought about when I was reading this. So in ancient days, chickens and hens were used for this, or um, roosters as well, any kind of you know bird that can move around quickly like that. And even then they were highly regarded, which is actually really amazing to think about because nowadays, think about how we treat our chickens and our roosters. So the fourth type of auspice that an auger witch will use is what is known as from the quadrupeds. Now this is pretty common actually, especially nowadays, where a four-legged animal will cross your path. This is known as the from the quadrupeds auspice. Typically an auger witch will use key animals such as wolves, dogs, cats, horses, foxes to help translate the message. And we've all heard of the mysterious black cat being a bad omen. Now that is actually a lot of why that is called that because an auger witch will use that as a way to help, you know, translate their omen. And from the quadrupeds, it it's not typically in the case of, oh, well, I have a dog, so a dog walked across my path. No, it's usually when, for example, like I said, an auger witch will help an individual along their spiritual quest or journey. And when that individual is, say, walking down a street and all of a sudden sees some random fox run across the street, how often do you see a random fox run across a modern street nowadays? Things like that. It has to be kind of out of the blue in a way to help the universe get that message across to you or to an auger witch they're you know they're aware of that message and they translate that to the individual so the fifth and final key auspice that an auger witch will use is what is known as from the portents from the portents is just a way of translating messages that don't necessarily fall under the top four categories. And it can be something as simple and little as a person sneezing during a conversation about transition. It can be something that small and little and the right person who's trying to find out a message from the universe will pick up on that and say, oh, I understand, I got that. 
And I really want to mention that in a spiritual sense, all of us communicate with the universe and with our guides and angels and whomever in our own unique way. Some people will use auspices, some people are your witches, some people aren't, you know, and they'll use whichever way the universe needs to convey the message as best as they can to that individual. Some people use tarot cards, some people do not, some people meditate, some people sing. And these are all different types of what is known as from the portents in an auger witch you know conversation so it's examples like this that make up this fifth and final type of auspice to an auger witch and lastly what makes you think that you're an auger witch similar to a lot of the witches in this list it all boils down to studying the craft as well as falling within your ancestral line Two key abilities that auger witches have are extreme intuitive nature and um, intent, as well as psychic abilities. Their psychic abilities are so in-depth and so in tune that a lot of people, as I mentioned earlier in the video, they believe that they're actual fortune tellers. They're not. They help translate what could be an omen to what could possibly be the future, but they don't sit here and say and assume, yes, this is exactly what's going to happen. At the end of the day, we all have free will and things are constantly changing on our path. But in Augur, which is psychic abilities and intuitive abilities are their two key ability and components to what makes them who they are, as well as their ancestral lineage. And the final key component to understand about an Augur witch is that they do do their craft in order to help others. Typically, I can't speak for all of them and I'm not an auger witch, but that is all I have today on the auger witch. I hope that you guys learned a lot from this video as I did researching it. If you like what I'm producing and sending out onto this channel, feel free to click the um, link below and hit the like button and hit the subscribe button to see more witch videos coming through and any other um, spiritual vlogs that I'll be releasing in the future. And if you want to see anything else going on that I'm releasing that may not typically be on this channel feel free to join me on Instagram or my Facebook group that will um where I'll be releasing other things that are not necessarily going to be released on this channel I hope you all have a blessed day thank you so much for joining me love and light bye